They say it's not about the answers you know, but really about questions you ask. Because the right questions will lead you to the right answers. So good morning again, guys. I'm back. Okay, it is time to discuss and in transformation. How exactly do we uh, form interrogative? Okay, from declarative uh, statements. So for you to do this right, you need three things. These are the requisites. First, um, a strong knowledge base on verb tenses and verb forms because we'll be using them a lot. Second, uh, of course, subject verb agreement and word placement of modifiers. So let's begin. Let's try transforming these to the yes or no questions. We have three statements. She is lost. He is watching the video lecture now. I want Bukoy. So, using the same sentence, she is lost with will become, is she lost? Okay, and the second sentence will become, is he watching the video lecture now? And the third sentence will be, do I want Bukoy? So, notice the three simple sentences say, uh, actually, we already some the three basic rules when transforming statements to questions. First rule involving, look at sentence number one, use of a linking verb. Number two, a verb phrase, that means a combination of a main verb and helping verb. And the third is involving an action word. So, specific, let's go to, the few, um, to a few basic rules in constructing questions. First, um, the one questions answered by yes or no. So the first rule, so we talked about be verbs. So if the verb, if the sentence uses a be verb, you simply switch the positions of the subject and the verb. So that means you will not introduce anything else. You will stick to the be verb used in the same sentence. So Ligaya is an athlete. You simply say, is Ligaya an athlete? Reviewing his lessons. Okay, third. Sentences that use um, action words. So if there's action word, you have to uh, introduce the use of the auxiliary verbs do, does, did at the beginning. So first rule, when do you use do? Okay, only if the subject is plural and verb is in present tense. Okay. Example, the officials give benefits to drivers. What is the verb? Give. Okay. The officials plural. And the verb therefore is also plural. And it's present in present tense, so we use do. Do the officials give benefits to drivers? So you can't use does. Does the officials? Because that will be incorrect. You cannot use did because uh, the tense is in present. Okay, and if the subject is singular, we use does. Oh, there's a typographical error. It should be does. Add does to the beginning of the sentence if subject is singular and verb is in present tense. Okay, example, Jane studies primates. So this Jane study primates. Notice what happened to the word studies. Since um, the auxiliary verb does carry already carries uh, the present tense of the verb, your 
verb, the new verb in the question form will now be base form. So remember that rule. Every time you use do, does, and did, it should be together with a base form of the verb. So for example, if sentence become Jane studied primates, your question will be did because that will carry the past tense. Did Jane study primates? Okay, again, study base form. So, looks easy, right? It will become a more challenging if you have more elements in your sentence. Like, sometimes you'll be confused where to put the modifiers, the complements, etc. So, we'll have examples that are more complex. But first, let's look at um, the second part, which is transform statements. This time, um, WH questions. You have to be familiar with the different WH, like the basic ones, what if you're asking for information, if you're asking for repetition or confirmation, for example, what is the meaning for existence? What? I can't hear you. Or what did you say? So you ask what. But if you, if you add a for, what for, then you are actually asking why, reason. What did you do that for? Who? Asking um person about a person or people or the subject, whom asking what or which person or people, but this time it becomes the object like whom did you see? Okay. And then other questions, why asking for a reason? Why don't why don't you're suggesting something? And where, which, of course, you have choices, and how um, describes manner, your are about manner. Like, how can we solve the problem? Okay, you have to be familiar with that study. Because uh, when you're given a sentence, the WH question that you will use will depend on what is being asked. Example, if it's the subject, RJ has my laptop. So, the expected answer is RJ and it's the subject. So, you simply replace that with the WH, the right WH in this case is who because you're asking about the person. So, who has my laptop? Or the large room is bothering you. What? Large rooms, objects. So, what is bothering you? To replace the person or thing being asked with uh, the suitable WH word. So if it's a subject, most of the time you'll use what, which, who, or whose.
Okay? The meeting was in the afternoon. Expected answer in the afternoon. So when? When was the meeting? Okay. Now, if you uh, see that the sentence uses a, may, a verb phrase, meaning there's an auxiliary together with the main verb. Um, for example, I can do it. I can do it. And the expected answer is it. So what can I do? Or they are leaving tomorrow. Expected answer tomorrow. When are they leaving? Or my lunch. Okay, next expected answer. My lunch. What should have I eaten? Okay. Or I should have finished my homework. Expected answer. My homework. What should I have finished? So, uh, notice what I did there. So, you have to split auxiliary from the main verb. So, auxiliary, WH, auxiliary, subject, second verb, and then the rest of the sentence. So, example, um, the expected answer here is Robinson's. They have been to Robinson's. So where have they been? So, you might have noticed that the rules are the same for transforming um, statements to yes or no and WH questions. So, for practice, I took some lines from the video, what makes a hero. So, I want you to construct the yes or no and WH questions. So, for the first part, I will do it along with you guys. But for the second part, you have to write your answers on your own and then compare it with my answers. So number one, let's have yes or no question first. Joseph Campbell studied minutes from all over the world. Okay, sorry, I missed period there. Please put period. Okay, studied. So rule number three applies. Studied. Um, we'll use do, does, or did. Okay, since it's in past tense, we use did. Did Joseph Campbell, what will happen or no verb? It will become base form, right? Okay, every time we use do, does, did, use the base form. Did Joseph Campbell study men from all over the world? Okay, number two, he published a book. Published, so action word, again, rule number three, again, did. Did he publish a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces? Okay, number three, pick the verb. You have retails, you also have explains, okay. Um, the book is singular, so we use does. Does the book retell dozens of stories and explain how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey? Okay, notice that I use the this form of retells and explains because both verbs um, pertain to our subject. However, the verb represents, okay, it has its own subject, which is each. That's why you don't need to change it. Okay. Number four, the journey begins and ends. So, again, present tense, singular. Thus, the journey begins and ends in hero's ordinary world. Number five, as is true, again, singular verb, a uh, singular um, subject, present tense. Thus, the quest passed through an unfamiliar special world. Okay, number six. There are are linking ver um be verb therefore rule number one use the same. So are there some key events along the way? Okay. I hope things are getting clearer. Now for the WH question, I understand 
underline the expected responses. So example, for number 7, a mysterious message. So you can replace that with the WH. The hero receives what, okay? And then you uh, arrange it. What? What auxiliary do we use? Do, does, or did? Right, okay, we use does. What does the hero receive? Okay, number eight. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Okay, so the hero needs some help from whom? Whom? Okay, so you say, from whom does the hero need some help? Okay, and then number nine. The hero. The hero is expected answer process. Um, verb present tense singular. So we use who and it's the subject. So you will substitute who crosses the threshold from his normal safe home and enters the special world and adventure. Okay. Next, being a hero is hard work. So expected answer, hard work. Being a hero is what? But it sounds incomplete. What is being a hero? Um, since it's a compliment, it describes okay, what it is like being a hero. So you can phrase your question as, what is it like being a hero? And then the answer is hard work. Okay, so if that's Lee, I want you to do 11 to 15. Write um, your answers in a sheet of paper. Five answers. So 11 to 15, construct yes or no for this uh, set. And then same set of items. This time, UH questions. And these are the expected responses. Okay? Pause the video for a while while you do your work. Okay, good job, guys. Thank you for finishing that exercise. I know no one's watching, but with all honesty, we're able to finish. Okay, now, compare your answers with these sentences. Okay, now for the references. So final note, uh, again, if you're still confused, read more. And be ready for our deepening exercises next meeting. That's it. Good morning, everyone.